This week we're comparing two telephoto lenses for sports photography. So this week something a little bit different. I've come out to Rotherham to watch a grassroots Sunday league football match between Aston Athletic and Autumn Black Bull. They're local rivals so it's a bit of a derby so I'm expecting a really good match. And I brought with me the Sigma 150-600mm to lens and the Nikko AFS 300mm PF F4 lens. And really what I'm doing today is comparing these two lenses, seeing which one's best for capturing sports photography. And what I'm really comparing today is whether the extra reach of the Sigma is better than the wider aperture of the 300mm Nikko. So they're going to kick off shortly and we'll see what shots we can get. Well, Orton have just scored, so it's 1-0 to Orton. I'm finding it difficult with the 300mm, it's okay when they're at a distance, but when they get close it's actually just too long, the focal length. Not being a zoom lens, I'm just not being able to fit people in when they get close. But I'm going to stick with it for this half, I'm going to try the Sigma next half. Unfortunately for Aston, Orton have now extended their lead to two goals. In regards to the lens, I am finding the focusing really quick and accurate, so that's good. Like I said, when the players are too close, the focal length is a bit too long. But the maximum wide aperture of f4 is really good for getting that blurred out background. So when I want to separate the players from the, the rest of the background and the other players, that's really useful. It's also really useful to be able to drop the F number down when the light's dropping low like it is now. I have got my ISO quite high, I'm set at 2000 at the moment so the image was, might be a little bit grainy but that's better than them not being sharp or not capturing the action. In terms of settings on the D500, I've got it in continuous autofocus mode, I've got it in high burst rate and I'm also using 72 points of focus so I'm hoping with the 
300 millimeter lens, which is quite good in the focusing department, that's gonna snap on pretty quickly and get the action. Alright, it's the second half now, still 2-0 to Orton, and I've switched to the Sigma 150 to 600mm lens. I was thinking before that I might need the extra range of this lens, but now having used the 300 and knowing that that's a little bit too close already, I'm thinking I might make more use of the 150 end on this lens, but we'll see. So as predicted, having the 150 end of this lens is actually really useful, particularly when they get closer to the lens. And at that focal length, the maximum aperture is f5, so that's all right too. It goes down to f6 and then f6.3 as you zoom in towards the 600 end. We've just had a goal. <laughs> so it's another goal to Orton. So Aston have got a goal back now. It's 3 1 to Orton, but the game's still on. In terms of the lenses, I am finding that the focusing is a little bit slower on the Sigma compared to the 300mm Nikkor lens. But the main problem is just the weight. It's so heavy, it's really causing fatigue in my arm. But I'm going to power on and hopefully still get some good shots. So one thing I'm needing to think about with the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens is where I set the focus limiter switch. So most of the time I'm on 10 meters to infinity and that's because I'm not really capturing images that are closer than 10 meters away from the lens. But I am finding just on one or two occasions I want to just get a close in portrait and they might be closer than 10 meters so I just have to remember to flick that to uh, I think it's 2.6 meters to 10 meters and then I can actually get focus. I don't really want to have it on full, although that would allow me to get focus at any distance, it will make the lens much slower at focusing. So in terms of the match, unfortunately it's bad news for Aston, good news for Orton, they've scored another goal, it's now 4-1 to them and the rain's starting to come down so not too long left to go, not a great afternoon for Aston.
Okay, so the final whistle's gone. It was 4-1 to Orton. I'm wrapping up now. I'm going to get back, get these on the computer. We'll compare the quality and we'll talk a little bit more about how I thought the lenses performed. I'll see you back there. So final score was Orton Black Bull 4, Aston Athletic 1. Congrats to Orton. Commiserations to Aston. I personally really enjoyed it. I'm quite new to sports photography. I haven't done much before, but I did really enjoy it and I think my images were okay. If we're talking about the lenses and which performed best, when it comes to image quality, they're both really good, they're really sharp. The 300mm, if we look at this image here, in the centre, very sharp, this is wide open at f4, but if we go to the edges, we see here on the sock and the foot, that's really sharp as well. We can't really compare it in the very corner because the grass is out of focus, but if we come just a little bit higher, you see the grass is still sharp, and I know from using this in the past, it is generally really sharp across the whole frame. The Sigma is really sharp as well, not quite as sharp as the 300mm as you'd expect comparing a zoom lens to a prime. But if we look at this image here you see again sharp in the centre. Over here on the left this guy's sharp here. On the right you see this foot's still sharp. So we have got good edge to edge sharpness and this is wide open f5 as well. So yeah while it's not quite as sharp as the 300mm it is really good and to be honest, there's not much difference in image quality between the two. I've done videos individually on each of these lenses, and if you want to go back and watch those, I'll put links in the comments section below. So when we're deciding which was better, it really just comes down to usability and handling and things like that. As I said earlier in the video, the 300mm was a little bit long at some points, and I couldn't quite fit people in the frame if they came anywhere near me. And that's from my own naivety, really. I'm used to using these lenses for bird photography where the subject is quite small and you really need that reach. But I hadn't anticipated just how different it would be when I'm trying to capture a group of players which are obviously much larger. And 300mm was just too long at some points. So having the zoom of the 150 to 600 really helped. Having said that, it is a very large and heavy lens. If you compare it to the 300, there's just a huge size difference there, and I can tell you it also weighs a lot more as well. And by the end of the second half, my arm was really starting to ache a bit from the weight of this. So, it is really tricky. <laughs> I don't really know which one to go for, but I think if I had to just choose one, if I was going again, and I was only taking one lens, I would go with the Sigma. And that's not because it's a better lens than the 300mm. I think in the image quality department, this lens is certainly better. It's obviously much lighter and smaller, and you can handle it much easier. But for this application, the range of the Sigma, going from 150 to 600, was just so much more practical. If the ball was really far away and the action was happening much further away from me, I could zoom in at the 600mm end. And then as they came towards me, I could zoom right out and the 150mm end came in really handy. If I was taking it in the future though, I would probably take a monopod or a tripod even and use a gimbal head and I think it'd be much easier and I'd get much better results that way. So yeah, the Sigma 150 to 600 mm narrowly wins this one for me. That's about it for this video. Massive thanks for watching everyone. I know you could all be doing other things with your time, so if you're watching this video, I really do appreciate it. And if you've liked it in any way, or you found it useful, and you think other people might too, then just give me a thumbs up down below. That makes sure that YouTube spreads this video a bit more widely, and then hopefully more people will see it. And obviously it helps me and the channel out. So if you are new to the channel and you're not yet subscribed and you'd like to do so, you can just click down there on the big red button. That way you'll keep up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. There's a new video every Sunday morning, 10 a.m. UK time. So I hope you'll join me next week for the next one. But until then, thanks a lot everyone and bye for now.